Hello everyone, my name is Christian Colombelli, Spinning Castells from Douglas Outdoors. Also an avid swim bait angler. This is uh, quite a departure from what we just witnessed up there. I know everyone in this area is very familiar with finesse techniques, but I'm just here to talk about something you may not have seen and something that can be really effective in these parts. So, on Friday I gave my seminar on glide baits and we focused more on hard baits. Today we're going to talk about big soft swim baits. And this is a really phenomenal way to target massive predatory fish. I'm going for huge largemouth, but smallmouth will hit this as well. You'll get pike and musky, and it's just a really great way to upsize your catch. Remember, you've got to get in a different mentality when you're fishing this type of bait. You are not going for bites. You are not going for 30 fish a day. You are going for one trophy fish. And the more time that you keep this bait in the water, the more chance you have of catching that trophy fish. So what I'm holding in my hand right now is a bottom dweller big paddle tail. So there's a difference in uh, the type of soft swim baits. This paddle tail is going to generate a ton of kick in the water. So when I get up into that tank, you're going to see what this thing can really do. And I fish it on a, a bunch of different retrieves. It's super versatile. I've got a big 10 uh beast style hook. And as you can see, I have a blade underneath for added flair. So think, of that, think about this as a big underspin almost, which is pretty crazy. I know this is hard to conceptualize, but it will get attraction from smaller fish as well. Uh, so let's talk about this uh, this boot style tail. So you see how floppy that is? That's going to generate a ton of action in the water. So I like to fish this in warmer water. If I'm going to, if I'm targeting colder water, I'll go to a wedge tail, which I'll pick up in a second. Let's also talk about the equipment. I'm using a Douglas 805D. This is one of our swim bait rods got a big long tapered handle which is really important when you're throwing this thing because this is really borrowed from salt water. You're going to take this bait and really launch it over head and finish right there and turn the reel over and you need a long handle to be able to leverage that bait and to throw it properly and to control the bait once it's in the water. Then I'm going to tuck this, once I have it out there I'm going to tuck it under my arm. That's where that long handle really comes into play and it's a huge advantage. So I have it under my arm. I'm going to keep the rod tip low. I'm not going to allow any slack and I'm going to reel really slowly. And that's just one retrieve, but that is a general rule of thumb with a style bait like this. And you're going to, the first thing I'll do is start off, I'll try to crawl bottom and I'm bumping into things and I'm trying to trigger a directional change to where this thing gets bit. And then I will start fishing in different parts of the water column. You can throw this thing out and throw like a spinner bait, straight retrieve. And then on that straight retrieve, and you'll see it when I get up there in the tank, I'll impart a real bump like this. And that will cause it to kick out, which again causes another directional change. I don't know if anyone saw my seminar on chatter baits yesterday, but it's that same type, of, uh, same type of approach with this bigger bait. Causing this thing to kick out will get a strike. Okay, so let's talk about a wedge tail. Okay, so here's another giant. This is another giant bait right here. This is a Defiant 247. This thing is 10 inches, weighs over six ounces, but unlike that, uh, paddle tail where I was uh, rigging with a beast style hook there. This is actually a line through. So what is the advantage of a line through? Well, the advantage is you can rig it on the bottom. So I don't have any hooks attached to this right here, but I can just go right through the head. And then if I'm fishing this higher in the water column, I can have one 
treble right here. And then a lot of the times I'll, I'll use a 130 pound fluoro with a saltwater crimp and I'll put another treble on the back here. So I can fish this thing way up high in the water column and if something comes up to ambush it from behind, a lot of times you'll get a kill shot, a bass will hit the middle of this bait and you got to you got to pin them. And then this thing slides up the line and they can't use the leverage of the bait against you. So all you have is hooks in the bass's mouth or the predatory fish's mouth and you basically got it. You just grind them in. And I'm fishing this on a Douglas. Oh, and then obviously, let me talk about the other aspect of this. You can run this through the top of the bait as well and it comes stock with two jig hooks. Like I don't know if you guys have ever seen a spinner bait with a trailer hook on it, but that's basically what this bait comes stock with. So you'll have a single hook here and then a, a, another single hook attached to that that sits right here. So this is, I think about this bait as kind of a continuation of the Huddleston, which is the most famous soft swim bait of all time. It's just got a more modern design that's really engineered to ensure that you get a hook set or get hooks in the fish's mouth. And this wedge style tail, it's totally different. This is really good for fishing in colder water. The bait won't have as much roll as that uh, boot style tail or that paddle tail right there. But instead, the bait will stay straight and all you'll get is that little subtle wiggle. And I don't know if you guys have ever seen a, uh, a trout swimming, uh, you know, a trout that just got stuck that's swimming in cold water in the winter, disoriented, but this really mimics it perfectly. And that's what you're going for with these soft baits. You're really trying to, it's more of an illusion of the real thing. This is a realistic presentation and you're fooling the bass into thinking this is their natural forage. Okay, so I'm fishing this on the Big Bertha. This is the Douglas 807. And this thing can handle from uh, six ounces all the way up to 14 ounces. And look at how this bait loads the rod, even that. I mean, this is a substantial chunk of plastic right here. But this thing will throw in a country mile, and you got a lot of firepower in your hand. And you can really, on a bite, again, I'm fishing this with lock drag. I'm not giving these things any leverage, and I'm just grinding them home. I'm dropping wherever they hit. I'm using my body, and I am not moving that rod. Wherever the rod ends up, I'm keeping it right there and powering home. Okay, so let's move to uh, a different style bait. And then we'll get up in the tank. Okay, so right here I have a burrito. This is a Buca, Bur <laughs> Buca Burrito. Great name. Uh, it's made out of silicone, so it's super durable. This is a bait that can take a lot of abuse. You know, I don't know if you guys have ever fished other soft baits, but they get chewed up pretty quickly. This thing you can get, I would say you can probably get close to 50 to 100 fish on this thing. I mean, unless you get a crazy muskie that just rips to shreds. Silicone is super durable. Why is this bait, why is it unique? It has incredible thump. If you guys like fishing chatterbaits, if you guys like fishing bladed jigs, vibrating jigs, this is a logical progression. It's not a crazy size. This six inch size and this profile will still elicit a lot of bites from you. I know everyone here loves to fish smallmouth. Smallmouth will crush this thing. It's also super versatile. You can fish this thing in any part of the water column and I'll demonstrate that up there as well. Uh, you can fish it like a jig and that's when smallmouth will pin the top of it to the ground. You just hop it on the bottom. You can fish it mid water column, like I said, like a chatterbait and get erratic with it or just fish on a straight retreat. And then what I like to do that I don't think a lot of people take advantage of as much is fish it on the surface. And you, you'll see that when you fish this thing fast on the surface, and you impart real bumps, you'll get this thing to kick out like it's a bait fish that's injured or a bait fish that's been had or been spooked. And that's when fish come out of, they come on glue. Sometimes the faster you, you fish this thing, the more damage you can do. And I've got 
the video footage and the GoPro footage to prove that. And I think it's an underutilized technique. So I'm fishing this on our Douglas 765 Fast. This is also a great A-Rig rod. It's got a great fast tip section, but also parabolic nature. I mean, you can see the bend right there. That thing will bend all the way down. Uh, and it's great for keeping these moving jig hook style baits pinned. Now, let's talk, on this one, I'm fishing it on straight 25 pound big game, but most of my stuff is braid to leader. Fish really heavy braid to leader, so I'll fish 65 pound or 80 pound braid to a 25 to 30 pound shock leader. My 35 pound, if I'm going that heavy, it's going to be Sunline Saltimate. It's a shock leader, so it has the proper, the stretchy properties of mono, but it's super strong and super thin. And I'm tying all of this with an FG knot, which I know everybody is, sees the FG and gets freaked out, but it's just a, it's just a braid, simple braid. It's like a Chinese finger trap. Once you get it down, it's just a tedious thing, and you're good to go. Talk about one more and then we'll get up there. Okay, so this, for all you guys that are, and girls and anglers that are on the fence about this style of fishing, this is a great way to get into it. Throw a gill style bait, and you can throw this on, you know, more conventional tackle. I have this on a Douglas 766 Extra Fast right here. This is a great flipping punching rod. You can frog and heavy cover with it, but it's also great for setting the hook on these jig style baits. When would I fish this? Well, anytime the summer approaches, warm months, I'm throwing gills. In the gill spawn, I'm throwing gills. You throw this right on a bed, you could get fish absolutely, you know, you just piss the bass off enough during the spawn, oh, it'll envelop this. You throw it on a bed, it'll try to clear it away. So again, in those hot summer months, that's where this really comes into play. And I'm throwing this on 50 pound braid. This is 20 pound leader, FG knot, Shaw Grigsby mainline knot. All right, so let's get up in the tank and check out some of these baits. Okay, that is uh, not the most ideal situation here. All right, so let's start off with this Defiant 247. So again, this big profile gets these things excited. Up. See, they're already fired up. So now, if I just crawl this on the bottom, like if this is a winter style retreat, I'm crawling this thing along the bottom, hitting it off rocks, moving it along. One, I'm looking for that directional change. And these fish are trying to pin it. Every one of these fish is attracted to this bait. Sorry if I soak you in the front row there. It's like SeaWorld. Basically like Shamu. So, when I fish in mid water, water column like this, I'll put a real bump in like this. Boom. Or a rod twitch. Just to get that directional change. Again, super versatile bait. You really do need big gear to throw this. This is a six ounce bait. This thing is substantial. 
And look, if I was suspicious, if I was actually out, I would target uh, like a riprap wall or some type of point like this because it's an ambush point where these fish can hit. And I would keep it as tight to cover as humanly possible. Okay, let's move bait, let's switch baits. Show you the difference between this and a paddle tail. Kick. Okay, so notice the difference in the swim with this big paddle tail here. This is a bottom dweller bait. Jose's got these over at Doc's Tackle. So there's going to be way more action in the tail here. More roll. Oh. Oh. Man, they like that trout. These things want to eat trout. So here's a tip. If you guys are trying to get into this, go find a trout stock. Find a fishery close to you that stocks trout. Go about two weeks after the trout stock and start throwing. Uh, we're asking you to stop by booth 88 to enter a raffle with over $1,500 in prizes to support the University of Buffalo. See that body roll? It's getting them fired up. It's just a different look. It's better for warmer water. One more here. And look, I can burn this thing too. Oh, he's on it. So look, these are one and two pound bass that are still getting fired up for this thing. Okay, let me throw another bottom dweller here. Just a smaller profile. I don't think I even talked about it when I was down there. But this is more like a mag draft uh, six inch. Just check this out because this is something that you can, again, throw on more conventional style tackle. Bottom blower six inch, underspin. Think about it like a big underspin almost. So again, super versatile bait. You crawl this on the bottom. Up. Oh. Up. Oh. Let's speed up the retrieve a little bit. Let's go midwater call. All right, let me move over to that burrito. This is a totally different, way more thump. Okay, so this is one of my favorite baits, really. And let me start off with that topwater style presentation, because I think this is what gets really underutilized, or what is really underutilized, and this is how I always start when I'm fishing this thing. See how it just kicks out? Kind of tough in this little space, but just to get get it high and have that, that tail cause that commotion, sometimes these things will come up and come unglued and drill it. Okay, so let me hop in like a jig. So if you like jig fishing, consider doing this. Fish this baby like a jig.
Oh boy. Well, they like that. All right, real quick, I'm just going to show you the skill. And then if you guys have any questions, I'll be right over at the Douglas booth. Come talk to me. Thank you for your time. I'm just happy I didn't fall into the tank. Again, this is available at Doc's Tackle. This is that little gill, Savage Gear gill. This thing is lethal. Great way to get into throwing uh, soft baits. Again, you can fish this thing like a jig. What's that? This is a Savage Gear gill. Three quarters of an ounce. So you can throw it on a lot of conventional tackle. Oh my god, that got wrapped up. And look, here's the straight retrieve. They like it. Okay, and also one more technique that's really useful, the yo-yo. Take advantage of the paddle tail. Uh, Doc's tackle, right there, at this booth. You see it right there? Two, 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 nine bass. Yeah, go buy it. Okay, so that was uh, a lot of information in uh, a little time. Thank you guys so much. If you have any questions, I'll be down there. If I don't fall off this ladder, I'll be down there in five minutes or so. Thank you.